today we are upcycling and recycling items that I rarely use into some high-end pieces of decor that I will be able to use all year long. My inspiration came from the Front Gate website. They had this set of vases. They're gorgeous, but they are way too expensive. Look at those prices. I think we can do better. I have a pair of amber orange colored vases that just I didn't use very often. The only time I really got them out was during the fall or Thanksgiving. The size and the shape of these vases is perfect, but I needed to change the color. If you are a beginner DIYer, this is a perfect place to start. This is one of the easiest projects that I've ever done. We're gonna start off by washing the vases and letting them dry completely. And then I'm gonna take them outside. I flipped them upside down and I got some white Rust-Oleum spray paint. I began to spray the vases. I did a good solid coat of paint around all the sides, the top, and then I let them dry for about an hour. And I did a second coat of paint. I wanted it to be completely covered in the white paint once the second coat was finished. And then I let it dry overnight. Already the paint has taken this vase from, you know, okay, to gorgeous. Just a little bit of paint, it's amazing the transformation that it can make. Now the gold detail of these cherry blossoms on my inspiration vase was real gold. I don't need real gold. So I just got on my Cricut Design Space, I created this cherry blossom design. And if you don't have a Cricut. I have several other options for you. Number one, you can free paint this design on just with a paintbrush and some gold craft paint. My skills at freehanding are not very good. And I knew if I did that, it would not look very professional. If you can do that, do it. The second option is I have created a free printable for you guys. Now you can take this printable, you can print it off at home, cut it out, get some Mod Podge and put it on your vase or your container. Another thing that you can do is you can get some shipping labels. They come in big sheets. You can print them off on the sticky shipping labels, then cut them out and then adhere those stickers to the vase. So there's a couple of options if you don't have a vinyl cutter. Inside my vases, I placed some dogwoods. They are from the Dollar Tree. I also have some other beautiful pink and white florals. I'm bringing in that pink filling because a pastel pink is just perfect for spring. And that's what we're going for in this design is kind of a, a subtle spring design. If you're looking to decorate with neutrals for the changing seasons, using pieces like this is perfect because it doesn't scream spring or summer or fall. What it does is it gives you a neutral backdrop so that you can add different florals, maybe a topiary, something inside that can be themed in those seasonal colors. But because this vase is a classic shape and it's in a neutral color, it will be able to blend in with any season or style. Okay, let's quick look back at our original pieces. They were so expensive, but by taking items that I already had, I simply transferred that idea onto something that I could afford. I had these vases, I had the spray paint, I had the vinyl. So for me in this project, this transformation cost me zero dollars. You could get a vase at a thrift store, you could go through your closet, you spray paint it white, add the, either a detail like this or one that you love, and you would have a beautiful high-end piece that you could use all year long. I found these cute little bird houses at the Dollar Tree. So I scooped up a couple of them and we're gonna take it from this and we're gonna transform it into this. To begin, we're going to use some paint because that's the biggest bang for your buck as far as transformation goes. I'm gonna be using that same white Rust-Oleum spray paint. I took my birdhouse outside and I sprayed it in the spray paint. I sprayed evenly around the entire house and then I let it dry for 30 minutes. 
Then I did a second coat. I made sure the entire birdhouse was completely covered in the paint, and then I let it dry for two hours. Now I wanted to have some gold accent and I thought, you know what? I have these gold tags that I bought at the Dollar Tree and that will be a beautiful accent. So I just took these tacks and I pressed it gently right into the wood on the roof line. I added a line down one side and then I repeated the process on the other side of the roof line. The shiny gold tacks are a beautiful accent on this birdhouse and it carries in the gold and white theme from my vases down to my birdhouse. To coordinate my birdhouse even further with my vases, I decided to add one little cherry blossom that wrapped around the side and the front. Now again, I'm going to have this free printable and you could use this one right here to wrap around a birdhouse. I did a couple different sizes, so you had a variety to choose from. Again, just print it out, cut it out, Mod Podge it, or use those shipping labels, and it will be able to stick on there just as well as any kind of vinyl will. I placed my birdhouse in the center of a white urn on top of a little mini cupcake stand, and I also added in some raffia and a gold garland. If you don't have a nest and you can't find one or you just don't want to spend the money, let me show you how to make one really quick with some Dollar Tree raffia. All you need to do is just take it, wrap it in a circle like this. You can either tie the end together, you can zip tie it, you could get a little ribbon, but you can make nests just like this. And you have a pretty little nest. You can make different sizes or shapes. So this is what I did and I put one of the nests around my candle. My candle is sitting in a cut glass bowl. And then I also put another one just on the side and placed a couple of eggs in it. It's a great detail that's cheap, easy, and I really like it. I also added in some pink and white speckled eggs. I got these at Target last year, and I love the way that it ties in the white and the little bit of pastel pink from the flowers into the bottom of the design. Every single item that we made today was super easy. The vases, a little bit of paint, and a decal. The birdhouse, a little bit of paint, some thumbtacks, again, another decal. And look at how beautiful this display is. This could be a perfect way to decorate for spring, especially if you don't want to go all in for spring. This is a subtle hint. This is also great if you want to transition from winter to spring and you don't want to go all the way into spring quite yet. If you want to use these vases all year long, you can do that too. That's what I love about neutral decor is that they're what I call evergreen pieces. They're going to be perfect all year long. And all you need to do is switch the contents out to theme them into that different season. Also, if you see something that you love online or in a store, think about how you can recreate it for less. There are always ways to get something that you love for a more affordable price. Just have to be creative. After the Christmas decorations were all put away, I was replacing my home with my daily decor. And I just wasn't feeling it. It was a little too dark and heavy, and I wanted this space to be light and bright. So we're gonna freshen up this space by giving it a little bit of a transformation. We're gonna start with this fireplace wall. I'm going to start off with changing the oil painting that was there for a mirror. I love decorating with mirrors. They are timeless, they are classy, and they also reflect light back into the room. The shape of this mirror is so on trend right now. I have seen them all over Pinterest, all over the internet. However, if you wanna buy one, you're gonna have to pay for it because they can get really expensive. So I was thinking, how could I find one that's affordable? And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna hit up my local thrift store and so that's what I did. They had a huge variety of mirrors there. I rummaged through and I came across this gorgeous mirror. 
and it only cost $15. Yes. Now the brown color, it definitely needed to be changed and I knew that, but the shape was perfect. The transformation started with a good washing. I scrubbed it and got all the dust and debris off of it and then I dried it completely. I got out some butcher paper. I'm going to cover up the mirror with this butcher paper. Now there's a teeny little spot in between where the frame is and where the mirror is. And I could tuck that butcher paper right in between that space. It's a much better option to use the butcher paper because I know it's underneath every single part of that frame as opposed to say blue painter's tape because I don't know about you, but sometimes I put that stuff on and it's uneven and then I'll actually get like a line. So the butcher paper worked wonders. I did use the blue painter's tape to adhere all of the pieces of butcher paper together. Once everything was thoroughly covered and protected, it's time to paint it. I'm using this Rust-Oleum Gold Metallic Spray Paint. I love this spray paint. It is a perfect shade of gold. I use it all the time. And you can buy it at Walmart or at Lowe's or Home Depot. I began to spray the paint on the frame. I did a light coat around all the sides of the mirror. I let the first coat dry for about 30 minutes. And then I did the second coat. I repeated this process. And one way to make sure that you get a good even finish is to stand about one to two feet away from the piece and to move the paint constantly, to move that spray paint, to move it around constantly so it evenly adheres to the frame. Once it was completely saturated in the paint, I let it dry for an hour. Then I simply removed the butcher paper and the painter's tape and it revealed a brand new refreshed mirror. I hung it above my mantle right here and I love the way that it reflects so much light back into the room. It also reflects a brand new chandelier that I had hung up just a couple days ago. I love this thing. It is beautiful and the mirror reflects the light from the chandelier and I will be telling you more about the chandelier in some upcoming videos. I am excited to show you the rest of this room refresh. We're gonna be doing some more DIYs, so make sure that you come back and stay tuned for those. Working with mirrors, especially in darker rooms or smaller confined spaces, is a great design element to add because again, it reflects, it makes it feel larger, and it also is a timeless, elegant piece that doesn't go out of style. And for $15 plus a can of spray paint, I was able to transform this mirror into something remarkable. I've had this iron fireplace screen for probably about 10 years now, and it too needs a refresh. It has some gorgeous scroll detailing on it and some really pretty elements, but you couldn't really see them because it was monochromatic. I'm going to brighten up this screen and make these iron details pop by using that same Rust-Oleum spray paint that we used on my mirror up above. The first step is to give it a good washing and then I let it dry completely. Now instead of using the butcher paper on this screen, I'm going to use copy paper because there's no way that I'd be able to tuck in all of that butcher paper in here but the copy paper, since it comes in smaller pieces, I could just slide that right underneath the scroll work. And then I secured all the pieces of the copy paper together with some blue painter's tape. Then I took my fireplace screen outside and I did a light coat of the gold spray paint on the surface of the fireplace screen. I make sure that I got the sides, the bottom and the top. Once I was finished with my first coat, I let it dry for about 20 minutes. Then I came back and I did the second coat. I repeated the process, making sure that I got the paint into all those little nooks and crannies. And then I let it dry completely, which took about an hour. Now it's time for the gratifying part. We're gonna remove all of that copy paper and see what we have. I pulled the paper out from underneath all of the scroll work and the detailing really pops now. It's so much lighter and brighter and looks much more expensive than it did before.
cost that went into this project was a can of spray paint and I didn't even use the whole thing. So let's say three fourths of a can of spray paint. So a couple of bucks and look at how fantastic this fireplace screen looks now. It's amazing how a simple color change can completely transform a piece. These two feather arrangements have been on my mantle for some time now. I love the way they look. However, a lighter colored floral arrangement will brighten up the space and make it feel fresher. The inspiration for this floral arrangement came from this floral arrangement that we did a couple of weeks back. If you remember, we did a display on my breakfast table. I made two ginger jars and in the center was this beautiful floral arrangement. It had this glass container with the gold accent. I was shopping it at home stores and I came across this beautiful glass container with the same gold accent. And I thought, how perfect would that be to have a coordinating one over here on my mantle? Plus it was larger, so it would be able to accommodate a much bigger arrangement. The cost of this container was $30, which is definitely going to be the most expensive project out of all three of these. However, I think that it's a classy piece I will definitely be able to use again, so I didn't mind paying the money. They also had some really pretty artificial flowers there. They were a little more expensive, but they did have some affordable options as well. To begin my arrangement, I'm going to use the tape grid method. I love using this because it cuts down on the floral foam and the cost of flowers because they're so much more compacted and bunched together. I'm going to get my clear tape. I'm going to make a grid. I simply take my tape and span the gap of the container. I prefer to use the grid method because it cuts down on the cost of floral foam. You don't need that. Plus it's really easy to make the arrangement. And in this instance, I wanted to see through the clear container and not worry about looking at the floral foam. I chose a light, bright color palette for my floral arrangement. I got some white magnolia stems from at home. I kept them bunched up and simply bent the stems and placed them in between the holes on my tape grid. Again, by bending these stems, you're going to be able to use them again. You're not doing anything permanent to them, so if you decide to use them again for another project, you pull them out, unbend the stem, and they are as good as new. I also place several other varieties of white flowers. My contrasting colors are gold and green. I found these stems, I don't even know what they're called. I like them, they look like artichokes to me, and they were only $2.99 at home store, so that was an affordable stem. And I put one on either end of my arrangement. And then also, here is a money saving tip. You can use filler flowers from the Dollar Tree. Now, filler flowers are flowers that just support the beautiful starring flowers. These are my main attraction, but the Dollar Tree flowers make it look full and lush and just kind of add that extra oomph that the flower arrangement needs in order to look big and beefy. Now these stems of leaves that I put along the bottom, they're from Michael's as well as the magnolia leaves. Now around the bottom, I like to do something called breaking the vase. You're not really breaking the vase or the container. What it means is that I'm going to waterfall these flowers over the lip of the container, which softens that harsh edge and makes it look more natural. Finally, I place those gold magnolia leaves sporadically throughout the arrangement. If you were to purchase this floral arrangement at a department store or at a boutique, it would run you in the couple of hundreds of dollar range. I created mine for an affordable price, plus I will be able to use every single thing that I put in this flower arrangement again. To complete this fireplace wall transformation, I'm going to add some tall candlesticks that I got several years ago at Tuesday morning. They're going to flank either side of my flower arrangement. These candlesticks is just what this mantle needed to complete the light, bright fireplace wall transformation. Here is a picture of this fireplace wall before the transformation. And here's what it looks like now. 
I think it looks modern and up to date and perfect for spring and summer. All three of these DIYs were so easy that anyone at any skill level would be able to do these. All I did was use some paint and it transformed it drastically. And the flower arrangement, so easy. And you can customize it to your specific taste and design style. I'm going to be transforming this entire room. So I've got some fun projects coming up. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out. And then also I post some sneak peeks and some behind the scenes on my Instagram stories. So come find me over there and you can see the things that are happening before you can see them on YouTube. How many of you love high-end decor? I sure do. I don't, however, like to pay the high-end prices. Take for instance, these ginger jars I found online for $302. I am not gonna pay that. So I'm gonna show you how I created a similar look with a $10 thrifted lamp. My lamps are from my local thrift store. They had a huge variety there. The prices range from $7 to $10. I found this pair that was $10 a piece, which is a great deal. They mimicked my jars really well. And let's be honest, these lamps were in need of a makeover. Now you can find lamps at Goodwill. You can find them at the Salvation Army. You can go to some garage sales, or maybe you just have some lamps at home that you don't use anymore that are this size and this shape that would be perfect for a ginger jar. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble the lamp. I'm going to take off the lamp shade. I unscrew the light bulb and took off the lamp harp. Then I twisted the base socket to detach it from the lamp. I pulled it off and then cut the electrical cord with a pair of wire cutters. Now there may be other ways to remove the mechanics of the lamp without cutting the cord. However, this is the best option that worked for me. I'm not going to be turning this back into a lamp. So I literally just cut the cord. It's time to grow up little lamp. I cleaned my lamps with a damp cloth and then let them air dry completely. Having a clean surface will make the paint be smooth when you spray it on there and it will also help it adhere better to the surface. Next, I taped off the bottom and the top portions of my lamp with some blue painter's tape. I did this very carefully, making sure that each part was taped off because I didn't want any of the white paint to seep onto these areas. I repeated the process of taping the top and the bottom with my second lamp as well. I'm painting the center portion of my jar with some white Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sprayed an even coat lightly around the entire lamp. The key to getting a smooth finish is to make sure that you're about a foot away from what you're spraying and that you're constantly moving. I moved on to my second lamp and I did a base coat of paint on that as well. After I was finished, I let the paint dry for about 30 minutes. And because the color underneath was so saturated, I didn't want it to bleed through the white. So I decided to do a second coat. I repeated the process of spraying the paint evenly around the entire perimeter of the lamp. Then I moved on to my second lamp. I repeated the process of spraying a second coat and then I let them dry completely, which took about an hour. I removed the blue painter's tape from the top and the bottom of my lamp. Now the original color of the top and the bottom portion of the lamp, it was okay, but I really wanted it to be a lot more saturated in that gold color. So I used the same metallic paint that I used in so many of my projects. I just love this color. I purchased this at Michael's and I got a paint brush and I painted on this paint onto the bottom and the top. One of the things that I really love about this lamp is that it's really smooth in the center, but on the top and on the bottom, there's some texture to it. So as I was painting, I really enjoyed seeing all of the texture and the bumps 
on the top and the bottom portion of this, the contrast between the smooth and the bumpy is going to be such a nice detail in the finished look of this ginger jar. After I'd finished the first coat of paint, I let it dry for about 30 minutes. And then I came back and I did a second coat of paint to make sure that it was really saturated in that gold. And then also these little toppers at the top that were on the top portion of the lamp, I wanted to paint those as well. So I did two coats of paint on these round toppers and then I let everything completely dry overnight. Now there was a hole right here in the top portion of my lamp where the cord came through to attach the lamp mechanics. Uh, never fear though, I decided that I would get some clear Gorilla Glue. This stuff is fantastic because it dries crystal clear. So as you can see, if there's any seepage, you can't even tell that there was anything because it dries clear. So I added some of this clear Gorilla Glue to the bottom of my knob and then I placed it right over the top. Not only does this knob cover up the hole, but it adds a bit more height and an extra design element to the top of my jar. Holy smokes, you guys, look at how pretty these dupes ended up. $302 or $10. I'm gonna go with the $10 option. Every time I walk by this table, it just makes me smile. Because it's the Valentine season and we're moving into spring, I wanted to theme my jars. I didn't want them to be overly Valentine's-y or springy, so I decided to use a dusty rose ribbon and tie it around the top. I tied it into a bow, and then I added a beautiful sparkly fleur-de-lis pin. I pinned that right to the center of the bow, which adds such a beautiful accent. Can you believe that we started off with a $10 thrifted lamp and we duped these $302 ginger jars almost perfectly? These gorgeous high-end ginger jars are going to be the perfect accessory to decorate with on a regular basis. And as you can see, I've also themed them. You could theme them for summer, spring, fall, winter, just by changing out a ribbon. Or and of course, if you left it plain, it would be a beautiful neutral accessory to use all year long. In the center of my ginger jars, I have created a beautiful spring themed floral arrangement. To begin this flower arrangement, I'm going to get a clear glass container with a gold accent. Here is a tip to make a beautiful flower arrangement. Instead of getting some floral foam like the traditional way, I'm just gonna use some tape. I got some scotch tape and I created a grid. Using the tape makes a little pocket so I can place my flowers directly into the container and they will be held upright. It also cuts down on the flowers that you need because they're so dense and compacted because they're held up right. And then also you don't need any floral foam, so that will cut down on the cost. <music> Tip number two is that I take my beautiful flowers and instead of trimming the stems, I bend the stems. As you can see, I took some of the long stems and I bent them in thirds, and I took some other ones and I bent them in half and then I could place them into my container at the exact height that I needed. And the best part is that when I'm ready to switch out this flower arrangement to a different design or to use these flowers in another arrangement, I can just pull them right out, unbend the stem, and they will be as good as new. Down the center of my table, I have an intricately embroidered runner. On either end of the runner, I'm placing our reimagined lamps turned ginger jars. In the center, I have a gold and mirrored tray. And inside of the tray, I'm placing our beautiful spring floral arrangement. 
I always love using candles in my design. I love the glow that it brings. Plus, it always makes everything smell so good. So I'm placing a candle on top of a gold candle holder. And then I got a beaded tassel and I'm wrapping that around the candle to finish off the look. Okay, so let's compare my ginger jars to the $302 ginger jars. They're both 18 inches tall. They both have white in the center and gold accents on the bottom. I added some gold to the top. I like that. I think it looks pretty good. So that was my little personal touch that I added. The Inspiration ginger jars were pretty straight. Mine are curvy. I like a curvy ginger jar, but if you like the more straight ones, I'm sure you could find a lamp that was straight up and down. So all in all, I would say that ours is a pretty darn good dupe. Plus, I made two, so that would be $604, and I spent $20 plus paint that I already had at home. So I'm, I'm okay saving that amount of money in order to get these ginger jars. If you make these or something similar to them, I would love to see your project. So tag me on Instagram. I like to add your projects to my story or just send me an email with your pictures. I just love seeing your projects. I don't know about you, but I have a cabinet full of glass vases that I have collected over the years. Every time I open the cabinet door, they just stare at me, waiting for me to do something with them. Today, one of these vases gets to get a makeover. I'm going to spruce it up by adding some glass etching to the front. After thoroughly washing my vase and letting it dry, I headed over to my Cricut Design Space to make a damask design. To get the correct size, I measured the front of my vase so I knew how big to make my stencil. In my Cricut Design Space, I went to New Project, then I clicked on Images. In the search bar, I typed in Damask. Several options came up. They had such a wide variety of beautiful choices. I settled on this one. I selected it and then I put Insert Image. The image transferred to my design space. Since we had measured the front of the vase, I knew the exact dimensions I needed and I typed them in at the top. And because I wanted one vinyl stencil, I decided to weld it, which creates one solid piece. At this point, I could just select and delete the pieces that needed to be cut. Now that my design is finalized, I clicked make it. For this project, I'm using a white vinyl. I cut it to the correct dimensions and put it on my sticky mat. Now that everything is prepared, I could click continue. And at this point, I selected my material, which was vinyl. And I always select more on the pressure. I'm going to load my mat by hitting the flashing arrow button, followed by hitting the flashing C button, which begins the cutting process. Once the cutting process is complete, I'm going to hit that flashing arrow button, which will release the mat, and then I'm going to hit finish on my computer. Sometimes it can get a little time consuming weeding out those little pieces of vinyl, but take your time. It'll be worth it because you won't tear the vinyl. Once my design had been weeded, it was time for the transfer tape. I lined it up carefully with my vinyl design, and then I got my scraper tool and pressed it firmly to the top of the vinyl. Then I pulled the vinyl and the transfer tape away from the backing that was behind the vinyl. I laid my vase down flat and put my vinyl design directly in the center. Then I got my scraper tool and I scraped it firmly to the vase. Then I removed the transfer tape. I used my scraper tool to press the edges of the design firmly to the vase. If you haven't used etching cream before, it is seriously such a piece of cake. I purchased mine on Amazon and it came with a bonus paintbrush. I'll leave a link to where I bought that in my description box. You can also get some at Michael's. I added the blue painter's tape to the edges of the vinyl stencil. 
just in case any of the etching cream spreads off, it'll get on the tape instead of on the glass. At this point, all we're gonna do is take our etching cream and our paintbrush and get a liberal amount and spread it all over the top portion of the stencil, making sure that all of the glass that we want etched is covered. Once everything has been covered, let it sit for one minute. And then I took it over to my sink and I rinsed it off thoroughly. I got a wash rag and I wiped off all of the excess cream and then I blotted it dry. After that, I took off my stencil and the blue painter's tape. Some of the parts were really hard to get off because they were stuck on the base really well. So I got my weeding tool and that helped pull up those sticky vinyl pieces. Once all the vinyl was removed, I gave it one final rinse and then dried it completely. The subtle design is really hard to see unless you're looking really carefully. So I put it in front of my window so the light will shine through and you can see the design. Isn't that gorgeous? This is one of those little design details that make a piece custom and unique. Inside of my vase, I added some pink peonies and some white florals. Now, because the vase is glass, you can see through it, you're gonna be able to see the stems. So just make sure that you put those in kind of an organized kind of a way because you will be looking at those stems. So this lucky vase got pulled out of the cabinet and got a makeover today. A little etching cream and a stencil transformed this plain vase into something beautiful. I love using candles when I decorate. However, they do not always come in the most dynamic container. And sometimes the ones that smell the best are not the prettiest color. So in order to overcome both of those obstacles, I'm going to embellish this vase and we're going to make it be a candle holder for our candle. I purchased this vase at HomeGoods for $6.99. It's the perfect size. I can put smaller candles inside or larger ones will fit too. I could even fill it up with some water and add some floating candles. As you can see, we're sticking with the damask design and I'm going to put a damask vinyl stencil over my vase to turn it into a gorgeous candle holder. Back in my design space, I hit new project, then I went to images. In the search bar, this time I typed in damask card. Several options came up. Great designs once again, and I selected this one. And then I clicked insert image. Now, because we only want the damask design, we're going to take the other parts of the card and delete them. Just select them and delete them. Once all the pieces were deleted, I was left with this beautiful damask design. I hit the unlock button so I could choose the correct size that would fit onto my vase. And so I sized it appropriately, and then I hit the duplicate button, which made an exact replica of my original piece. Since I had two pieces, I hit the select all button, and then I went down to weld and welded the pieces together to make one larger piece. And then I hit make it, which sorted it onto my mat. Because my design was 12 inches long, I needed to select okay, and then I hit continue. At this point, I selected my material, which was vinyl, and then I always push more on the pressure. I hit that flashing arrow button, which loaded my vinyl into the machine, and then I hit the flashing C button, which began the cutting process. Once the cutting process was complete, I hit that flashing arrow button, which released my mat, and then I hit finish on my computer. I measured the circumference of my base and it was 18 inches. Now my mat only goes to 12 inches. So as you saw, I welded those two pieces together, but I needed a third six inch piece. So I created one of those as well. I began to weed the excess vinyl away from my design. I got a segment of my transfer tape and placed it right over the top of my vinyl, got my scraper tool and pressed it firmly together. Next, I removed the vinyl and the transfer tape away from the backing that was behind the vinyl. I went slowly and carefully so I didn't rip any of the vinyl. Now it's time for the tricky part, <laughs> putting the vinyl directly in the center of this face. It was time consuming. I went really slowly. 
but I got it where I wanted to be. Once it was there, I scraped it with my scraper firmly to the vase. Then I got my second piece, that extra six inch piece, and put it on as well. Then I removed the transfer tape away from all of the vinyl. Just by adding a beautiful design, we have a customized piece that will fit into so many designs and it's an affordable price. Since we're coming up on the Valentine's season, I decided that for my final project, I would make some Valentine tags. Now Cricut makes so many wonderful and really pretty pieces of scrapbook paper. So that's what I'm using today. I got a pretty pink paper and I got a floral paper. But again, you could just use scrapbook paper that you have around your house. Back in our Cricut Design Space, we're gonna hit New Project, click on Image, and in the search bar, we're gonna type in Damask. Once again, many beautiful options came up and I scrolled down to this heart design, selected it, and clicked Insert Image. It inserted into my design space. I sized it appropriately. I needed two hearts, so I went over to Duplicate and hit that which made another heart tag the exact same size as the first. And then I scrolled over and I hit make it. Because this heart tag has two parts to it, it's going to print them off separately. The first is a scroll design. I'm gonna hit continue, and then it's going to give me my options of material. I'm gonna hit cardstock, and I'm gonna hit more on the pressure as well. Then I'm gonna hit that flashing arrow button, which is going to load my paper cardstock, and then I'm gonna hit the flashing C button, which is going to start the cutting process. Once the scroll design was finished cutting, I unloaded my mat and it automatically pulled up the second piece to the heart tag. I loaded this paper by hitting that flashing arrow button and then I hit the flashing C button, which began the cutting process. Once the cutting process for the bottom part was done, I hit the flashing arrow button, which released my mat, and then I hit finish on my computer. The paper cutout is so simple. All you need to do is pull it off the mat and then weed it. I like instant gratification, so I'm gonna be using double-sided tape instead of glue to adhere the top portion of my tag to the bottom. Tags like these are such a great way to customize pieces of decor for different seasons or holidays at minimal to no cost. Now that we're all finished, let's place all of our damask designs together. I placed my pretty glass etched vase with the florals inside of a large rectangular lantern. On top of my lantern, I put a big bow with some cream and gold ribbons, and of course, a damask ribbon. And to the center, I added some florals. I tied my two heart tags to the center of the bow and offset them slightly so that they didn't block the vase inside with the florals. And finally, I added a yummy smelling candle inside of our candle holder and placed it at the bottom of the lantern. I love the warmth and glow that the fire from the candle adds to the overall feel of this design. Guess one of my favorite home decor pieces that I love to use for spring and summer, it's flowers. Flowers are so bright and cheerful, and when dressed up, they can add elegance to a space. Speaking of dressing things up, we're gonna take this green Dollar Tree container and we're going to transform it into this white container. 
Now I've seen containers like this with this raised edge detail online and they are way more than $1. But in order to get that expensive look, it cannot stay this green color. We're gonna paint it white. I'm gonna use some Rust-Oleum spray paint. I purchased this at Lowe's. I took my container outside, flipped it upside down. I sprayed the first coat of paint around the entire outside perimeter of the container. I stayed about one to two feet away and I sprayed an even coat that completely covered the container. And then I let it dry for 20 minutes. I sprayed a second coat. Again, I stayed one to two feet away and I sprayed an even coat until the entire container was completely saturated in the white paint. And then I let it dry for an hour. Let's quick look at the difference between these two containers. The first one is something that you could easily overlook and the second one is something that you would want to take home. My next Dollar Tree find is this trellis. It was green at first. I wanted it to look a little more high end, so we're going to paint it gold. Again, I'm gonna be using a Rust-Oleum spray paint. This is a metallic brass spray paint. I purchased it at Lowe's. I took my trellis outside and I sprayed an even coat around the entire trellis. I let the first coat dry for 20 minutes. Before I sprayed the second coat, I laid the trellis down so I could get the underside. I spray painted the gold around the entire inside of the trellis and then I let the paint dry for one hour. Now it's time to put these two transform pieces together. The first thing I did was I got some floral foam when I put it inside of the white container and then I put my trellis on top. I got some floral pins, about four of them, and I placed them on top of the trellis and I pressed them into the floral foam which secured it really well together. I had two strings of gold garland that I purchased this past fall at the Dollar Tree. I know they're for fall, but guess what? We're gonna use them for spring. So I took my first strand of garland and I folded it in half. And then I placed it at the top of my trellis. I got a piece of floral wire. I wrapped it around the garland and threaded it through the wire on the trellis. And then I twisted it together to secure. And then I wrapped the garland around the entire outside of the trellis. And then to secure it to the foam, I got another one of those floral pins. I put it over the garland and pressed it deep into the floral foam. Next, I took my second strand of garland. Again, I folded it in half. I wired it to the top of the trellis. And this time I wrapped it the opposite direction around the outside of the trellis. Once I got to the bottom, I got another one of those floral pins and I pressed the end of the garland into the floral foam. I also took a few more of those wire pieces and I wrapped it around the center of the garland just to make sure that it stayed in place. I don't like seeing foam in my flower arrangements. You know how when you can peek through and you can see the foam at the bottom, I don't like to see that. So I'm going to get a little bit of raffia and I'm gonna press it through the trellis and attach it to the bottom of the foam. I should have done this first. I didn't think about it, so I'm doing it afterwards. If you're starting from the beginning, I would cover up my floral foam first. Now, when I was thinking about how I wanted to place my flowers in this arrangement, I thought I'll just do it at the base. And then as I looked closer to the free flowing garland that wrapped around the outside of the trellis, I thought I'm gonna do an asymmetrical arrangement. That way it kind of mimics those free flowing lines that go along with the trellis. All of the flowers that I'm using are from the Dollar Tree. I first took my cream roses and I trimmed the stems and I placed them into my foam. I have some hot pink flowers and some peach flowers and I added them to my arrangement evenly. That way there wasn't one big clump of hot pink flowers or, or one bunch of peach flowers. I just added them into that S shape. Once I was done with my floral placement, I added in some greenery that also mimicked that free flowing shape. And that's it. We are done. I love the power that a little bit of paint can have in transforming pieces from pretty mundane into something special. 
The best part about this arrangement was the price. The majority of the pieces that I got were from the Dollar Tree. It doesn't cost a lot of money to create a home decor piece that is unique and beautiful. Continuing on with that floral theme, we're going to create this rose piece of Mod Podge art. One of the things that I love doing on my channel is giving you the opportunity to create the exact same piece for the exact same price as me. In order to do that, I love creating these free printables for you. That way you can print them off and create them in your own home. If you want this printable, I will leave a link in my description box so you can print it off and have it for free. I'm going to Mod Podge my free printable onto a canvas. Now this canvas is from Ross. It came in a package of two and it was only $2.99. The first thing I'm going to do is get my Mod Podge and a sponge brush. I put a liberal amount of Mod Podge on the surface of my canvas. This canvas sucked up that Mod Podge. I had to use so much, but you wanna make sure that you have a lot of Mod Podge on there. That way your printable will adhere really well. Once the Mod Podge was on there, I placed my free printable in the center and then I got my kitchen scraper. I pressed the paper to the canvas. The kitchen scraper gets out any air bubbles that are trapped underneath the paper and it will make it lay flat. Now there is going to be some rippling because this is canvas and it's a malleable material. That was okay for me. I didn't mind all these little lines on it and made it look like a real piece of art. I let this first layer of Mod Podge dry for about 30 minutes. And then I came back and I added the top layer of Mod Podge. Again, I added a liberal amount. I also got the sides really well so the edges would lay flat once it was thoroughly covered in the Mod Podge. And then I let it dry completely, which was overnight. I wanted to add a frame around my canvas, but because the canvas is so thick, a traditional frame isn't gonna work. I don't care, I did it anyway. So I got this Dollar Tree frame and I just simply removed the glass and the backing. And then I put the frame right over the top of the canvas. And then there's these little metal pieces that would uh, originally hold in the back, hold it tightly onto the back. Well, I just press those onto the canvas and it stays on really well. To hold my frame upright, I have a small gold easel that I placed my canvas right inside of. Okay, you guys, because we did such a great job saving money on this piece and on our artwork, I thought it'd be okay to splurge just a little bit. And I did on this beautiful white urn. Now I have a home goods that's pretty close to my house, which can be dangerous at times. Me and my aunt love to go shopping there and we were there the other day and I found this white urn and I just had to have it. It is so beautiful. Now here is my reasoning behind purchasing this piece. Number one, I liked it and I wanted it. Sometimes it's okay to buy things that you like. I know a lot of times us as mothers or grandmothers or sisters or whoever we are, we save money and we think about what's going to be the best place for us to put our money. It's gonna be going towards our kids. It's gonna be going to our nieces and nephews, our cousins, our home, our husbands, whatever. It always ends up going somewhere else. Sometimes it's okay to buy something for you. Just remember that when you're out. Now, the second thing is this urn is timeless. It's the little black dress of home decor pieces. It's going to go with every season, every display, every style because it's neutral and timeless. So if you're gonna splurge on home decor, these are the pieces to purchase because you can use them over and over again despite your evolving style or the changing trends. I also have this cut glass candle holder. I added a little tea light inside. I love the way that the flame bounces off the cut crystal. It adds a bit of warmth and movement to the display. And finally, I wrapped a beaded tassel garland around the candle holder. These projects are great examples of how you don't have to spend a lot of money to create something that's beautiful and elegant. 
Remember that I have that free printable in my description box below if you wanna create this rose art. I've got a great lineup of spring home decor for you today. We've got everything from a thrifted birdcage to some Dollar Tree items we're going to transform. I found this birdcage at my local thrift store for only $3.99. It's nice, but it could be so much better. First thing I needed to do was to address the rust spots. There were some on the bottom and around the bird. So I gave it a good washing, I scrubbed it really well, and then I let it completely dry. The color combination that I'm going to be using today is white and gold, like I've used in so many of my other decor pieces. I love using it because it's neutral. So I'm going to, first of all, paint the birdcage white. So I need to tape off the top bird and also the latch. I'm using a white Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sprayed the first coat of paint on the cage. I covered it liberally until it was completely white. I let it dry for 20 minutes. Then sprayed on a second coat for a maximum paint saturation. And then I let it dry for one hour. I removed the blue painter's tape from the bird and from the latch. Taped off the cage with that same blue painter's tape and I also used a paper towel to make sure that this was completely covered. Then I got some gold metallic brass Rust-Oleum spray paint and I sprayed the bird, the handle, and the latch. I let it dry for 20 minutes, then added a second coat of paint. I let that dry for an hour. And finally, I removed the painter's tape from the bird and the latch. The transformation is so dramatic. It is bright, it is fresh, clean, and it looks so much more high-end. Has such a great variety of frames. I saw this white frame with a gold accent around the edges the other day. I snatched up a couple of them. We are going to turn this already great frame into something better. On my Cricut Design Space, I hit New Project. I went to Image. In the search bar, I typed in Lovebirds. Several options came up, and I scrolled down to this one right here. I selected it and I hit Insert Image which took it to my design space. I unlocked the size and I put in the custom size that would fit into my frame. I only needed the damask print and the birds, so I selected and deleted the excess vinyl cuts. At this point, I hit make it, which sorted it onto my mats. There are two mats because there's going to be two cuts. I hit continue. I selected my material, which was vinyl, and then I always hit more on the pressure. I chose the premium vinyl that looks like lace. I put it onto my mat. At this point, I hit the flashing arrow button, which loaded my vinyl into my machine, and then I hit the flashing C button, which began the cutting process. Once it was finished, I hit that flashing arrow button, which released my mat. Now it's time for the second cut. I put a gold vinyl onto my sticky mat. I hit the flashing arrow button, which loaded my mat into the Cricut. Then I hit the flashing C button, which began the cutting process. Once it was 100% done cutting, I hit that flashing arrow button, which released my mat. And now I have both designs. On my computer, I hit finish. With my scraper tool, I press the vinyl firmly together then I got my weeding tool and began to pull up the excess vinyl away from my damask design. I repeated the process on my second vinyl piece by using my scraper tool and pressing the vinyl together. And then I got my weeding tool and pulled up the excess vinyl away from the bird. 
These gold birds right here were originally supposed to be kind of a shadow or an outline for the lace birds that were made out of this vinyl. I decided that I wanted them to stand out and be bold, so I cut away the vinyl birds that were made out of the lace and I replaced it with the gold bird. That way they could stand out. Next, I got my transfer tape and I put it squarely in the middle of my vinyl pieces, got my scraper tool and pressed it firmly together, and then I removed the backing. At this point, I took my frame, flipped it over, and removed the glass from the frame. I placed the vinyl directly in the middle, pressed it firmly, and then I got my scraper tool and scraped it together, and then I took that transfer tape pulled it away from the vinyl, which left the design on my frame. To customize this piece, I'm going to be using this frosted glass Krylon paint. I purchased this at Lowe's. I turned the glass over so the blank side was facing up. I sprayed a light mist of the frosted paint over the glass. This paint dries a lickety split, so I only had to wait about five minutes. And then I added a second coat if you want more of an opaque look, just do one coat. I wanted my paint to be a little denser, so I did two coats. Again, you can customize it to your specific liking. Once I was finished spray painting, I let it dry for 30 minutes, and then I placed it back into my frame. What a cheap, easy DIY that looks so expensive and high-end. This is a beautiful, customized piece that is a fresh design that's perfect for spring. Another Dollar Tree find is this cloche right here. It had a brown base, which I didn't particularly like. I got out that same metallic brass spray paint and I sprayed a generous amount of the paint on the base to give it an updated look. To customize this a little bit further, I'm going to add a beautiful bird on a branch onto the top portion of the cloche. On my Cricut Design Space, I hit New Project. I went to Image. In the search bar, I typed in bird on a branch. Several options came up. I scrolled down and then I selected this one right here and I clicked insert image. It brought it to my design space. I only wanted the bird so I got rid of the shadow by deleting it. Then I sized it to the size I wanted. At this point, I went over to make it and it sorted it onto my mat and I clicked continue. It brought it to my material selection. I selected vinyl and on the pressure, I put more. I hit the flashing arrow button, which loaded my mat. And then I hit the flashing C button, which began the cutting process. Once the cutting process was 100% completed, I hit the flashing arrow button, which released my mat. And then I hit finish on the computer. Using my scraper tool, I pressed the vinyl firmly together and then I got my weeding tool and I pulled the excess vinyl away from the bird. Next, I pulled away all of the excess pieces that were in between the branches and the leaves. The weeding tool is really great for this part. I took my transfer tape and I placed it over the top of my vinyl bird. Then I got my scraper tool and I pressed the transfer tape and the vinyl together and then I easily removed the backing from the transfer tape. I placed my vinyl bird in the center of my cloche and then I got my scraper tool and I pressed it firmly to the center of the cloche and then I removed the transfer tape. I filled the inside of the cloche with a few eggs to finish off the look. so I created a few using some Cricut cardstock. In my Cricut design space, I hit new project, images, and in the search bar, I typed in bird. Several options came up. I selected this bird, and then I clicked insert image, which moved it to my design space. I wanted several of these birds, so I hit duplicate. 
I hit duplicate again. This time I shrunk it because I wanted a variety of sizes. I wanted a total of three of the smaller birds and two of the larger birds. Once I had my five birds, I hit make it, which sorted it onto my mat. I clicked continue, which brought me to my material and I clicked a medium cardstock and on the pressure I selected more. I hit my flashing arrow button which loaded the mat and then the flashing C button which began the cutting process. Once the cutting was 100% done, I hit that flashing arrow button which released my mat and now I have my birds. And finally, I hit finish on the computer. I punched out these birds really easily. The swirl in the middle was a lovely detail that gives these birds a unique look. I taped some fishing line to the back of the birds and then I tied the fishing line to the top of the bird cage. I also added a little nest in the bottom with some blue and white speckled eggs. The final touch is to add a tassel garland around the base. I placed my pieces on this large brass tray. I also added a raffia bird's nest and some of those same blue and white speckled pastel eggs for an additional spring touch. I think this vignette is fresh and bright. It's an elegant display that would fit in with any springtime decor. The neutral color scheme keeps these pieces versatile so that they can be used at various times throughout the year. 